Oh, yes, to state the obvious, I'm blonde now. What's up, everyone? Justin here, back again today to do a review. Um, I know I've been lagging quite a bit on videos, but finally had some time to drop something. So today, since I just finished the new release from Netflix, Mindhunter, gonna review that. So Mindhunter is the directorial debut of David Fincher on a Netflix TV show. And if you don't know who David Fincher is, where have you been? He's directed amazing movies like The Game, Fight Club, Seven, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Panic Room, Lords of Dogtown, Social Network, Come on, you've probably heard of David Fincher. He's one of my top two favorite directors right up there with Christopher Nolan. And I just wanted to talk about his new show because it was pretty dope. It really did set a tone if you have seen David Fincher's movie Zodiac. Fantastic film, I highly recommend that. So this show's about two FBI agents and they're also working with a psychologist and the two FBI agents are basically going into prisons in the 70s and they're interviewing serial killers and they're trying to see what's going on in their mind when they go through all these murders and all this other stuff that they're doing. And they're trying to write a book basically of either there's this type of serial killer or there's this type of serial killer and supposedly there's two different kinds of traits. One's really talkative, one's not so talkative. Like they're just really different people. It's very interesting the way that the show's going on setting up for season two obviously because they do drop a lot of names of very famous serial killers such as Charles Manson so that makes me think after this first season if it gets picked up again who knows maybe second season we'll get Charles Manson which spoiler alert we don't get Charles Manson in the first season so this show does jump a lot very fast from different state to different state California Pennsylvania Kansas you know they're just going everywhere a lot they're going to different prisons and interviewing all these criminals it's very interesting not only to see the inner workings of the FBI but to see what the judge the system actually goes and does on their own and the certain FBI agents that kind of take things into their own hands. You know, everyone's crooked. Where do you know from films and just the world in general that there's crooked cops, there's crooked FBI agents, everything, it's all fixed. So it's just insane to see the breakdown of that. This show, what it hits so well is totally giving a 70s vibe. Not only does it have amazing music from the 70s, all of the costume work, all of the set design was total 70s. Great job with the cars, great job with the towns. Everything was done with that. The acting was all amazing. Our main actor who played Holden in. he was fantastic it was weird he kind of looks like Dennis from it's always sunny in Philadelphia so I couldn't stop like taking him seriously at some point so, so that was pretty funny and I know David Fincher only directed four episodes which it really did feel like that the very first two episodes were total David Fincher don't get me wrong the whole show felt like David Fincher had hands on it but it was easily well known the very first two episodes and the two last episodes you could totally tell they were more Fincher-esque especially with the set designs and the one of the last episodes when it's on a plane it looks exactly how it did in Fight Club with the whole set scene and stuff, which was pretty cool. Pretty awesome, and it's pretty quick to get through. There is a lot of information thrown at you here and there, but it's nothing that no one can't fully understand. It goes by pretty quick, and it's it is very very rated R with the cussing and the violence and the blood. So um, just from images from their crime scenes and stuff, but more than anything, it's the language. So if you have a small brother, or sister, or child don't have them watch this show. There's a lot of, a lot of very violent stuff. The story overall was good. It just didn't hit as hard as it probably could have or that they wanted to. But I think it's definitely gonna get picked up for a season two. So we'll see if they hit their niche and actually go above and beyond next season. Like I said, all the actors in the story were good enough to get picked up and Netflix is picking up a bunch of shows already so I don't see why this won't get picked up. I definitely think it's worth a watch especially if you're a fan of Zodiac also directed by David Fincher because that's an amazing like dark film noir story which is exactly what this show is. As far as my rating goes out of 10 I'm gonna give it a solid 7.9 out of 10. Can't fully say it's an 8. It kind of just falls a little flat in the end you know there's a lot of great suspense and then the very very ending was kind of eh. So I'm gonna give it a 7.9 out of 10. So what do you guys think? Have you seen Mindhunter? What do you think? Comment down there. Let's talk about it. And catch me in my next video, guys. Like, subscribe. I really appreciate it so I can try to put out more videos for you. See you in the next one.